My name is Heather Dewey Hardborg, and when I'm feeling down, I go and see my therapist all the way across town. And one day I was laying there so straight up on my back, I saw a little picture with a very tiny crack. And in that crack was a hair, and it really interested me. A hair. A hair. Someone's hair. Who the hell's hair could it be? I couldn't stop thinking about that single hair, and then I couldn't stop thinking, who was there? Then I kept seeing hair on the street and on the train. I saw them on the footpath and in the drain when it rained. I collected all these single hairs and I put them in a bag. I wrote down the location on a little paper tag. I analysed the DNA from each hair from the road and the results came back to me as a series of funny codes. I took these codes and wrote a program to generate their face, to tell me which colour eyes they have and potentially their race. It tells me things like bone structure, colour hair and risk of disease. I was going to paint these strangers' portraits as I please. But I took it one step further and coded another platform to print in 3D, allowing the machine to print the portrait extremely realistically. And when I have these portraits done and I found out all I could know, I matched them to their location and I put them in a show. I called it Stranger Visions and I'm questioning genetic security to make people aware of the hair they shed and their right to privacy. This technology is not yet 100% correct, but soon it will and we will be able to detect how every single person on this world looks. As long as we have their DNA, we could census in a single book. I suppose it is a very structurally framed process, a scientific world of codes, symbols, systems and tests. And not often you see the clash between science and art but I'm highlighting the power of technology, and I think that's what sets me apart. So find a hair and pick it up, analyse its DNA, and have good luck. I am Adrian McKee, the only untraceable boy on Earth. I live in a plastic bubble, five kilometres northeast of Perth. I have a rare condition that I must not disclose. It makes me have to stay inside and be sealed from head to toe. Free from any allergens, free from normal food, free from bugs and dirt and dust, sterile spaces put me in a good mood. But sometimes sterile is boring, and as my bubble fills with tears, I think about why I can't eat food like you, and I realize my worst fears. And apart from living rural, I never really could fit in. Sports weren't really my thing, because I could never seem to win. The grass has made me sneezy, the rubber balls gave me hives, so I turned to alternative methods to give me that rush and make me feel alive. I started reading art books in the comfort of my clean and I got lost in the world of beauty, and then I began to dream of making art for myself one day, when my condition passes, when I can breathe the same air as you, I swear I will take classes. I'll paint amazing portraits of strangers I don't know, I'll make them up and give them names and I'll put them in a show. I'll call it Stranger Visions, to show what's in my mind, to prove that that allergy kid is really one of a kind. And when I googled the title of my exhibition to be, I found another artist doing similar to me. She is making portraits, but instead of being from her brain, she accurately prints them from their DNA. I can't help but feel angry. This is science and not art. Or is it art? But art's the only th thing I feel apart. When looking through my art books, I felt like I belonged. And now my bubble's filling up again and it all just feels so wrong. This artist makes art from strangers' DNA she finds. So everyone's a part of it, except for the one of a kind. The kid who was born with no DNA, the kid who can't even run away. 
So as I sit here feeling nothing and cry all alone, as my sweat makes me break out in hives, I moan. I thought art was brilliant. I thought art was me. I thought art was what I would be when I'm free. But as I feel all subjective and sad and confused, five seconds of art will have to keep me amused.